Let's look at another type of CVP problem where we are have a company that has multiple products. So what's going to happen is we will have a sales mix and we need to determine often which product we should try to sell more of so that we can get a um, higher operating income or which product's going to give us the highest contribution margin, things like that. So here's an example. We've got use the information from Crystal Cruise Line data set. Suppose Crystal Cruise Line decides to offer two types of dinner cruises, regular cruises and executive cruises. The executive cruise, cruise includes complimentary cocktails and a five course dinner on the upper deck. Assume that fixed expenses remain at $210,000 per month and that the following ticket prices and variable expenses apply. Okay. So assuming that they assume to sell four regular cruises for every executive cruise, compute the weighted average contribution margin per unit. Is it higher or lower than the simple average contribution margin and why? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, first thing we need to do is calculate our contribution margin per unit. So we should know by now what we need to do is take our sales price. And then we subtract our variable costs per unit, variable expenses. And that's going to give us a contribution margin per unit. Okay, so in this particular example, we've got our regular and we've got our executive. So the sales price for the regular is 50, variable is 20. So we know we get a $30 contribution margin per unit on the regular. The executive costs $130 with a $40 variable cost. So they're gonna make $90 in contribution margin for selling each executive cruise. Now, um, something here we need to look at is that sales mix percentage. So how much of each item do they think they're gonna sell? So in this particular example, they believe that they will sell four regular cruises to every one executive cruise. So if we take the 30 times the four, that gives us $120 in contribution margin to $90 for an executive cruise. Now when we're calculating the weighted average contribution margin, what we need to do is to take our total contribution margin here, which would be the 120 plus the 90 or $210 and divide it then by the sales mix percentages that we have here, which will be five. So if we take the four um, cruises to one, that's a total of five. So 210 divided by five gives us an average, weighted average contribution margin of 42. of 42. Now if you remember before it asks us is it higher or lower than the simple average contribution margin? Well it's going to be higher previously well higher than the cruise because again this was $30 per contribution margin this is $90 per and then so it said um, is it higher or lower than the regular cruise contribution margin calculated in the previous problems that we've been working. Well, if it was $30 before and it's 42 now, they've just increased their contribution margin by $12, which is a pretty nice bump. So will it cause their break even point to increase or decrease? Well, let's take a look. Remember how we calculate break even point Take the fixed cost plus the targeted net income divided by the weighted average contribution margin per unit. So fixed costs are going to be $210,000. There's no target net income yet. And then we divide it by the weighted average contribution margin per unit, which we just said was $42.
So 210,000 divided by 42 means they need to sell 5,000 tickets. And if it is on a scale of four to one, that means that'd be five. So the break even of regular tickets is gonna be equal to 5,000 times that percentage, sales mix percentage, which is four out of five. And that would mean they need to sell 4,000 regular tickets. And then the break even of the executive tickets, 5,000 times one fifth, because it was one out of every five tickets sold. So they need to sell 1,000 executive tickets to meet their 5,000 break even. Okay, so let me just bump back to this last question because I'm not sure we've addressed it quite yet. Um, will this new sales mix cause Crystal Cruise Line's break-even point to increase or decrease from what it was when it only sold regular cruises? Well, if we go back to the regular cruises, we had a break-even point here of 7,000 passengers. Now, if they go ahead and they do decide to add the executive, you can see that that break-even point falls to 5,000 tickets. So they've definitely lowered their break-even point from the number of units that they would need to sell.